Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright vs. The Great Detective Pikachu. Episode 1, Mega Turnabout. January 4, 2016. The time, 10 o'clock p.m. The place, just outside Capcom's headquarters in Chuoku, Osaka, Japan. The city is quiet, and everything is peaceful. Suddenly, a window on the top floor of Capcom's headquarters shatters. A body falls out and careens toward the ground. He falls onto a parked car at the side of the road. The impact crushes its roof. He is dead. The next morning, the police have surrounded the building. Their investigation leads them to find that the body was launched from the office window of Haruhiro Tsujimoto, Capcom's president. The police make their arrest. Mr. Tsujimoto makes his call. I need you to help me with this. I need representation in this case. I didn't kill him. You have to believe me on this. You know I do. That's our number one rule, always believe in your client. Thank you. Meanwhile, in a quaint house in London, an older model television set plays the news broadcast. In other news, Hariro Tsujimoto, the president of the Japanese video game company, Capcom, has been arrested for murder. His trial begins later this week after the police finish their investigation. Luke, pack your bags. We're going to Japan. The next day, the investigation at Capcom had slowed. The police were certain that it was Tsujimoto, and they had all the evidence they believed they needed. A man in a blue suit walked up to the officer stationed at the entrance and handed him a sheet of paper. We've been expecting you said the officer. These documents check out. You're free to investigate. Good thing. It was a long flight from Los Angeles. I wouldn't want to delay this any further. Oh quit trying to show off, Nick. You know we aren't from LA why do you always say that? A young woman in purple robes had come up from behind the man. After some back and forth teasing and joking, they eventually began their investigation. They made their way to the site where the body had fallen. Before they could start, however, a rental car suddenly pulled up beside the crime scene. A man in a large hat stepped out followed by a small boy. Hey Nick, is that? Layton. Shouted Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright. Responded Professor Layton. What in the world are you doing here? Asked Maya. Well, you see. Said Luke. The professor and I saw the news of the murder on the television. Leighton thought it was rather fishy, so he told me to pack my bags. Okay. Said Phoenix. But you don't need to be here. I was already hired to represent Mr. Tsujimoto, and I'll be in charge of the investigation. You being here only makes things harder. Well, old sport. Said Leighton. I promise not to get in your way. However, I must insist that I stay and investigate. I wouldn't want you to miss anything. I wouldn't miss anything, so your help is appreciated, but not needed. Oh Nick, let them stay and investigate. It won't hurt. Reluctantly, Phoenix agreed. The four made their way to the area where the body had landed. There were still fragments of shattered glass around the car. A white outline of where the body had fallen was made, but was wholly unnecessary. A dent, roughly the shape and size of a child had been made in the roof of the car. It's weird said Maya. That dent in the car is almost exactly person-shaped, like some sort of cartoon. What worries me is that this outline is really small, said Phoenix. Could this have been a child? Speaking of dead children, said Layton. This situation reminds me of a puzzle. A puzzle at a time like this? Asked Luke. Why certainly. There's no such thing as a bad time for puzzles. Quick whispered Phoenix to Maya. Let's ditch him while he's distracted. We need to talk to the lead investigator. Phoenix and Maya quietly made their way towards the building while Luke desperately tried to solve Leighton's puzzle. They made their way up to the office. They spoke to an officer, who informed them that the lead detective had left for the day. He handed them a document summarizing the investigation. Phoenix quickly skimmed it. Excuse me. Said Phoenix. But the victim's name isn't on the document. Unfortunately, that's sensitive information that we can't release until the trial. 
said the officer. But why? I'm sorry, but I can't tell you that. I know this hurts your investigation, but we were given strict orders not to release that information to anyone. The elevator opened behind them. Out stepped Luke and Leighton. And so you see, Luke. That's why it took 47 dead children. But why was the mayonnaise involved? Oh, Luke, if you keep making me go back and explain this, we'll never get to the investigation. Oh great. Said Phoenix. They're back. Ah, I see you've beaten us here. Said Leighton. Any new information, old chap? Only that they can't tell us who the victim is. Said Phoenix. Well, we should start our investigation in the office. Said Leighton. The four made their way into the office. There was a large desk in the room with a comfortable looking chair, and the window behind it was shattered. A lamp lay broken on the floor. Other than that, the room seemed pristine. Leighton made his way to the broken window and looked down. Phoenix followed behind. Nick, why are you clenching your fists? No reason, Maya. Silently, Phoenix tried very hard not to imagine how satisfied he'd be to push Leighton out of the window. They turned back to the desk. As they approached it, the chair began to swivel on its own. Phoenix took a defensive stance, holding out an arm to keep Maya back. The chair moved away to reveal a Pikachu in a tweed deerstalker cap. Oh, look at the cute. Um, what is that? Said Luke, confused. Luke really liked animals, but he had never seen one quite like this. Gentlemen. Said the Pikachu. And lady, I've come here to investigate as a consultant for the police. I am the great detective Pikachu, but you can just call me Pikachu. Hello, detective said Leighton. I am Professor Leighton, and this is my assistant, Luke. We're here to investigate the murder as well, with the help of our associates, Phoenix Wright and Maya Fay. Actually, said Phoenix. Maya and I are here because Mr. Tsujimoto hired us to represent him as his defense. Leighton is here uninvited. Well, regardless, said Pikachu. There isn't anything new for you to find. Everything the police have is in the report. We understand. Said Phoenix. But Maya and I always like to check out the crime scene ourselves. Phoenix made his way to the desk and opened its drawer. Inside was a gun. The report said there was residue on it to indicate recent use. Said Phoenix. That's right. Said Pikachu. Four bullets in the magazine, one in the chamber, and one in the body. There weren't any fingerprints, though. There were also some papers in the drawer, but they didn't look all that important. Ooh! Shouted Maya as she grabbed the papers. These papers have a released schedule of all their games. Oh, shoot! These are all from last year. Maya stuffed the paper in her pocket. Phoenix tried to argue, but she just acted like she didn't know what he was talking about. Oh! Said Leighton. All this talk about video games reminds me of a puzzle. So, there are these two chess pieces. If you ask me, said Pikachu to Phoenix. This case seems a little too cut and dry. The fact that the police won't even tell me who the victim was makes me very suspicious. Obviously this person was high profile, so why would the president of this company shoot him? It doesn't add up. I was thinking the same thing, said Phoenix. We should check the security cameras to see if we find anything. Don't bother. Said Pikachu. The camera cuts out about 15 minutes before the murder. No one showed up. All the ID records were wiped, too. I've got it, Professor. Said Luke. If the knight tells the bishop it's Sunday, he'll have to go to church and pray, leaving the queen all alone so that she and the knight can continue their love affair without the king knowing. Precisely, Luke exclaimed Leighton. Well, said Pikachu to Phoenix. I guess I'll see you in court tomorrow. Oh, yes, said Leighton. I've been meaning to ask where the courthouse is. Oh, I can tell you, said Phoenix. If you can solve my puzzle. I'm sure I can solve anything you could come up with, replied Leighton, smugly. Okay, 
said Phoenix. Here it is, there is a man who can't win any battles he hasn't lost. He has fought in and survived five wars, how many battles has he won? Oh that's easy. Said Leighton. There were five wars, so he must have won five battles. But he can't win them if he hasn't lost. Give me a second, I've got it. It's... um... Phoenix, Maya, and Pikachu all fled the building while Leighton tried to solve Phoenix's puzzle. As the elevator closed, they saw Leighton curl into a ball and rock back and forth as Luke tried to console him. Where'd you get that puzzle? Asked Maya. I stayed up all night writing an unsolvable puzzle in case I ever ran into him again. The next day, Phoenix and Maya met at the courtroom. There, they talked to Mr. Tsujimoto, who was sweating bullets. I didn't murder him, I swear. Cried Mr. Tsujimoto. I believe you. Said Phoenix. But what are we up against here? Who was killed? You have to get me out of this, Phoenix. It's no use. Said Maya. He's too shaken up. Speaking of being shaken up. Said Leighton, entering the courtroom. This reminds me of a puzzle. We don't have time for your puzzles, Leighton. Shouted Phoenix. Court will be in session in five minutes. I've never heard of having no time for puzzles. I assure you, this is a good one. Maya. Phoenix whispered. Can you do me a really huge favor and keep him distracted? No way. Said Maya. What if you need me in court? Please. I can't deal with him right now. Pleaded Phoenix. Don't worry. Said Maya. I thought this might happen, so I brought someone in. I've got you covered, Mr. Nick. Said Pearl, entering the courthouse. You and Maya have to always stick together forever, so I'll talk to Mr. Layton time for you. It's Layton. Layton corrected. Sorry Mr. Layton. Pearl asked Layton about his puzzle. She kept him very distracted since she had no idea what he was talking about, and wasn't very good at puzzles. Phoenix and Maya slipped into the courtroom. We're here for the trial of Haruyo Tsujimoto. Said the judge. The defendant has been accused of murdering a currently secret victim, who will be revealed during the advance of this case. Is the defense ready? The defense is ready. Said Phoenix. Is the prosecution ready? The prosecutor's bench was empty. That's odd, the prosecutor was here just a moment ago. Suddenly, a whip cracked against the desk. Foolish fools. Said Francisco von Karma. The prosecution is always ready. It is time to show the foolish fools who foolishly try to fool the foolish fools of their foolish foolishness that they are no match for one who can foolishly fool the foolishly foolish fool. That is the von Karma way. Was she seriously hiding so she could make a dramatic entrance? Asked Maya. Is it just me, or has the word fool lost all meaning? Responded Phoenix. Francisca whipped him in the face. Only a foolish fool such as yourself would foolishly feel like the word fool had foolishly lost its foolish meaning, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What a fool, indeed. Agreed the judge. The prosecution may now summarize their case. The facts of the case are this. Began Francisca. At 9.45 p.m. on January 4th, Mr. Hariero Tsujimoto brought the victim up to his office. There, they had a brief confrontation before Mr. Tsujimoto shot the victim and pushed him out of the office window. I now call the lead detective to summarize the investigation. Much to Phoenix's surprise, a familiar face took the stand. Please state your name and occupation. Said the judge. My name is the great detective Pikachu. Said Pikachu. And I am a consultant for the police. Unfortunately, the lead detective, a Mr. Dick Gumshoe, is out sick with not in this episode-itis, so I was asked to give the summary of the case. Well then, begin your testimony. As the prosecution stated, the victim had been brought up to Mr. Tsujimoto's office. There were signs of a very brief struggle, and then the victim was shot and pushed out of the window. 
Forensics matched the bullet found in the victim to the gun found in Mr. Tsujimoto's desk. Detective. Said Phoenix. You told me yesterday that this case felt suspiciously cut and dry. Is that true? Yes. Said Detective Pikachu. But unfortunately, new information has changed my opinion. What information is that? The identity of the victim. Who is the victim? Asked the judge. We've yet to be informed. The victim. Said Pikachu. Is Mega Man. The court erupted in shouts of awe and anger. It's no secret. Said the detective. That Capcom hasn't been treating Mega Man's series kindly. Three cancelled games in recent times, blaming the fans for that cancellation, and Keiji Inafune leaving the company, most fans would say Capcom was killing Mega Man, and I guess now they really have. This is bad. Said Ma to Phoenix. Even if Tsujimoto is innocent, this case and the public are stacked against him. Hold it. Shouted Phoenix. There's something that bothers me about the case. And what's that? If Mr. Tsujimoto really did murder Mega Man, why would he leave the gun in his desk? That is a good question. Pondered Pikachu. Furthermore, where did this gun come from, and did it even belong to Mr. Tsujimoto? The police never asked him that. Said Pikachu. The defense calls Harui wrote Tsujimoto to the stand. Mr. Tsujimoto was taken to the stand to answer Phoenix's questions. Mr. Tsujimoto, do you recognize this? Asked Phoenix, showing him the gun. Yes. Said Tsujimoto. That is my gun. What? Said Phoenix, internally. I'm sorry, I know that doesn't help my case. Said Mr. Tsujimoto. Why do you own a gun? Asked Phoenix. Well, you see said Tsujimoto. Here in Japan, the gaming industry is regulated the same way more adult industries are regulated. This means a lot of organized crime, namely the Yakuza, do business in the gaming industry. As such, I keep the gun in my desk drawer for protection. What time did you leave your office on January 4th? Around 8 o'clock. And was the gun in your desk when you left? Yes. Mr. Phoenix Wright. Shouted Francisca. What is your foolish reason for asking these foolish questions like a fool who wants to fool a more foolish fool with his foolish foolishness? Something doesn't add up with this case. If there was a struggle before the shooting, then it would have been incredibly difficult to get the gun from inside the desk drawer. Furthermore, almost everything in the office was in pristine condition. It doesn't seem like there was much of a fight. What is your foolishly foolish point, you fool? My point is that the events seem backwards. The file says no prints were found anywhere on the scene. Not the victims, not the defendants, not anyone. Even if the killer did clean up the crime scene, surely they would have missed something amongst the shattered glass. The defense posits that the shooting happened first, and then the killer half-heartedly tried to cover their tracks by making it look like there was a struggle. Huh? Laughed Francisca. You have foolishly dug your foolish self a foolish grave foolishly fit for a foolish fool. If the foolish fool Hariro Tsujimoto had foolishly left his foolish gun in his foolish desk, then the foolish conclusion you have foolishly brought us to is that the foolish Mr. Tsujimoto foolishly prepared the foolish gun ahead of time and shot the mega fool in his foolish chest. You could have fooled me, said Maya. Oh no. Cried Phoenix. We're done for. Mr. Tsujimoto, please tell me you didn't return to your office after you left that night. I did not. Said Tsujimoto. I left at 8, and then I went home. Objection. Shouted Francisca. This foolish fool is foolishly telling foolish lies to his fool attorney, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The prosecution calls its next witness, Mr. Foolish Joseph. The courtroom erupted once more. The judge banged his gavel to restore order. Please bring up the witness. The witness was brought up to the stand. Please state your name and occupation. My name is Joe. Beautiful Joe. I currently work as the custodian for Capcom. You look familiar. Said Maya. Have I seen you somewhere before? Well I used to have a game series. Said Joe. But that was a long time ago. Very sad, indeed. Said the judge. 
but we must get on with your testimony. Sure thing. Joe began. I was working the night shift, cleaning up the place. It was pretty dark. You have to keep the lights off in any room you're not using when you clean. I saw two people go up to Mr. Tsujimoto's office. I heard a loud bang and a crashing sound. Then only one person came back down. It was Mr. Tsujimoto. He killed Mega Man. Hold it! Shouted Phoenix. If it was dark, how could you tell who went into the office? That's easy. Said Joe. Mr. Tsujimoto came up to me and told me to keep it all hush hush. He what? Yeah. As he was leaving, he told me that if I kept quiet, he'd let me finally have a new game. Oh no, Nick. Said Maya. This looks bad. Actually. Replied Phoenix. I think he just uncovered a hole in this story. Oh yeah. Said Joe. And what's that? If Mr. Tsujimoto did commit the murder, and it was too dark to see who entered the office, why would he go back and talk to you? I don't follow. Said Joe. It sounds to me. Said Phoenix. That the killer would have gotten away without any witnesses. Instead, he chose to find Joe and make him a witness. I can't think of a reason Mr. Tsujimoto would want to incriminate himself. I don't know why this is important to you. Said Joe, sweating nervously. How should I know what he was thinking? The man killed Mega Man. He was crazy. Maybe he wasn't thinking straight. You're a foolish fool, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And this foolish lie of foolish questioning for a foolish Joe will do nothing to foolishly prove your foolish client innocent. Shouted Francisca. You're looking pretty nervous, Joe. Said Phoenix, confidently. Are you sure that you saw what you said you saw? Perjury is a crime, and I doubt you'll star in any games if you're in jail. Hey, lay off man! Retorted Joe. Tell us, Mr. Vetiful Joe. Said Phoenix. Did you really see Harmiro Tsujimoto on the night of the murder? Alright, fine. Joe shouted. I admit it. I didn't see him. But someone did talk to me. Foolish fool. Said Francisca, lashing Joe with her whip. Why would you hide this information? Tell us. Who was this foolish fool you foolishly saw on the foolish night of the foolish murder of the mega fool? It was. Said Joe. Takaya Kazuki. The president of Konami? Shouted Maya in surprise. He told me that if I said I saw Haruiro Tsujimoto that night that he'd let me be part of a pachinko machine. It's been years since I had a game. I'm desperate, man. Phew. Shouted Franziska as she began furiously whipping Joe. How dare you lie to Franziska von Karma. You're a foolish fool who fools the foolish fools by fooling a fool's fool foolishly with a foolish fool foolishly fooling a fool's foolish fool who fools fools fools. What the fool is she talking about? Said Maya to Phoenix. Fool if I know. Replied Phoenix. Order. Order. Shouted the judge. Bring in this Takaya Kazuki. We have some questions to ask him. The court went into recess while the police found Takaya Kazuki. You're doing a good job out there, Mr. Wright. Said Detective Pikachu. I had lost faith in the defendant, but you never backed down. It's our number one rule. Said Phoenix. Always believe in your client. You're a good man, Phoenix, and one heck of an attorney. Ah, Mr. Wright. Said Layton. So good of you to join us. It seems that Pearl has tired herself out with solving my puzzle. Perhaps you would like to try your hand at it. Phoenix noticed the police escort a man into the courtroom. You know, that would be wonderful. Said Phoenix. But first you need to solve my puzzle. Oh? Said Layton, nervously. I think that's quite alright. Mine is probably much more entertaining. What's the matter, Layton? Afraid of a puzzle? No. Layton sighed. I suppose my pride won't let me back down. What is your puzzle? If a tree falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it still make the sound of one hand clapping? Now that's just preposterous. A tree doesn't make the sound of. But what is the sound of one hand?
and if no one can hear it. Leighton fell to the ground, once again having a breakdown over Phoenix's puzzle. Oh no! said Luke. Not again! Maya and Phoenix went back into the courtroom while Luke tried to comfort a crying Leighton. Will the witness state his name and occupation? My name is Takuya Kazuki. I am the president of Konami. Are you aware of why you've been called here? Something about a murder? You have been foolishly accused of framing the foolish Mr. Hariero Tsujimoto of foolishly murdering the mega fool. Shouted Francisca. My, I wasn't aware of that. I assure you, I've murdered no one. We'll see about that, Mr. Kazuki. Said Phoenix. Please give your testimony. I couldn't have murdered Mega Man. Said Mr. Kazuki. I don't have access to Capcom's building. Furthermore, I didn't know about the gun Zujimoto kept in his desk, so there's no way I could have shot Mega Man. Objection! Shouted Phoenix. What? Shouted Mr. Kazuki, confused. You said you didn't know about the gun under Tsujimoto's desk. Yes, and? So then how? Asked Phoenix. Did you know that Mega Man was shot with a gun that you knew nothing about? I, uh... Face it, Mr. Kazuki. You know more than you're telling us. Shut up. Shouted Mr. Kazuki. Or I'll turn you into a pachinko machine. Besides, even if I did know about old Haruhiro's gun, that doesn't prove anything. Except we have a witness who says you told him to say Haruhiro Tsujimoto was the killer. Ah. You killed Mega Man, didn't you, Mr. Kazuki? Shut up. You'll all be pachinko machines when I'm finished with you. I didn't kill him. Tsujimoto did. He hated Mega Man. He wanted him dead. Objection. I have evidence to prove otherwise. Evidence? I'll turn your evidence into pachinko balls. Your Honor. Said Phoenix. I present to you a release schedule of Capcom's games from last year. Notice that there was a digital release for a game called Mega Man Legacy Collection. Furthermore, that same game is planned for a physical release this year. It may be small, but that doesn't indicate Mr. Tsujimoto wanted Mega Man dead. I must concede your point, Mr. Wright. Said the judge. Just admit it. Said Phoenix. It was you. Fine. Said Mr. Kazuki. I admit it. I killed him. I offered Mega Man a lifetime opportunity to be part of our new line of Konami Pachinko games. He told me to come to Haruiro Tsujimoto's office that night. I came, and he said that he was still putting faith in Tsujimoto. He said that even though Capcom doesn't always make the best decisions, he was going to believe in them. He passed me up. So I went to Tsujimoto's desk. He's not the only one with a Yakuza problem, so I knew there'd be a gun. I shot Mega Man, and I kicked him out of the window. You murdered him in cold blood. Cried Maya. Bailiff, escort Mr. Kazuki out of this courtroom. Said the judge. It took a while for the courthouse to settle down again. In light of this new revelation. Said the judge. I declare the defendant, Haruo Tsujimoto, not guilty. You are free to go, Mr. Tsujimoto. Later in the courtroom, Phoenix talked to Haruhiro Tsujimoto. Thank you so much, Phoenix. How could I ever hope to repay you for this? Well, said Phoenix. You can localize the great Ace attorney. Ha, 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 ha. You're too funny. But seriously, how can I repay you? I'll just send you my bill. Said Phoenix, exasperated. Hey, Nick. Said Maya. There's a letter here for you from Leighton. What's it say? My dearest Mr. Wright. Read Maya. I must concede that you have now bested me with two unsolvable puzzles. This is a great honor to be humbled by one such as yourself, so I feel I should return the favor. Here is a puzzle that I hope you will enjoy, as I would enjoy stumping a great mind as yours with it. Maya handed Phoenix the letter. The puzzle read. Thirteen people came into a hotel with twelve rooms and each guest wanted his own room. The bellboy solved this problem. 
He asked the 13th guest to wait a little with the first guest in room number 1. So in the first room there were two people. The bellboy took the third guest to room number 2, the fourth to number 3, etc. Until he brought the 12th guest to room number 11. Then he returned to room number 1 and took the 13th guest to room number 12, still vacant. How can everybody have his own room? Oh, this is easy. Said Phoenix. What's the answer? Asked Maya. I don't care. Said Phoenix, ripping the paper in half. 